because everything basically starts with a plain basic sleeve. Um, I made one page out of this magazine. August, September issue of Vogue is Patrick Quay. <laughs> this article is really fun. It's about sleeves, statement mm -hmm. sleeves. And they did all kinds of stuff to this plain pattern. And it turns this plain pattern into an interesting garment. Mm -hmm. And she tells you how to do the sleeves for this garment. And then afterwards, she says, if you need more inspiration, there are two more or three more pages of ideas. I have these wonderful, I guess they're quarter size, it's quarter scale patterns. Bought them from Lorraine Henry at one of the sewing expos. And I absolutely love them. This is, I take this one because I wanted to get rid of the, the elbow darts. But there are pieces in the package from her. There's a, a pant, a skirt, <coughs> different sleeves, different bodices, um, facings, and you can play with them and cut them up and do all kinds of things and see, you know, if you want to practice a little technique. But anyway, just because I know this, the things fit together perfectly. I mean, it doesn't look like it's pucker free, it was at one time. The sleeve went in just perfectly, so it fit. And so what I'm going to show you samples of are all things that started as this. And if you have a sleeve in your pattern, you can play with it just like I did here. Now, these sleeves, um, there's a lady named Rhonda Bus. She's from Chicago. And if you type in Rhonda Bus, and it's B-U-S-S, and sleeves on Saturday. She has an entire section of tutorials for sleeves. And she has a lot of fun sleeves. One of them is the first one that's on this handout, and it's called a cowl sleeve. And it's kind of a cold shoulder, but it's, it is open. Oh, how cute. But now it would be a lot cuter if this was a drapier fabric. Mm -hmm. But this is one of her sleeves. And look at this sleeve. And what happens is you take this sleeve, mm -hmm. you cut mm -hmm. it apart down the middle. And everything you do, when you cut it apart, you put it on a piece of paper. And now what's happened is this is now going to be a bias, but there is nothing different except this hem. I've, the, the sleeve got cut up the middle and folded out. And that's the picture there. And so that's what it looks like. This sleeve is cut from this pattern. Hmm. And all you do is, and she tells you how to do all this. It's cut on the bias. That's how it drapes the way it does. And you just basically fold in that hem allowance along the top. Where'd my piece go? You fold this in and press it. You don't stitch it down because that makes the softness go away. And in case this is, if it was a knit, it wouldn't matter. And this one was woven, so I pinked it. You press it, and then you have to tack that top edge together so that you can insert it like a normal sleeve. But the rest of the sleeve goes in exactly because you haven't changed this at all. The sleeve goes in just like a normal sleeve. And then this folds down in so cute. and drapes. So it's kind of a cold shoulder, but you don't see the shoulder. So when it's simple, I mean, there's not hardly anything to it. Now, the next one I thought was so cool, and you can see it in this. She calls this a cap sleeve or a strap sleeve. And this one you can see has a piece of contrast added. But the top 
is a flat line. And what happens with that, I have one more little piece here. Okay, the sleeves started out, get them all going the right way. And you cut it up and from the notch, you extend up enough that you would have the length here. And you add that width in a straight up piece. So the pattern ends up looking like this. It has horns. <laughs> anyway, so then this one is, it's set in. Um, it gets this lovely little tuck at the top. Now you haven't changed this because this has now become the top of the sleeve. And so you do have to add seam allowances and the seam allowance is sewed before the sleeve is inserted. And then the sleeve just gets inserted the exact same way that it would. So anyway, that one I think is so cute and it's simple. Then, oh, and on the next page, and I didn't make a sample of this one. Um, in, when you do the strap across the top, you make the center piece bigger or wider. You could put um, tucks or gathers or something in that space. Uh, you just would, instead of inserting like the red color, you would just make it wider. And um, you could put lace, you could do any number of things. One I just think is the coolest thing. On the last page, there's a picture of it. And this is what it looks like. It's just cute. And this is so simple. And all the pictures are there for you to see. Now, one thing she does that I think is so smart, when you cut and spread the pattern, number them. Because if they come apart, you don't have to put a puzzle back together. Okay, so this is what the pattern ends up looking like for this sleeve. And what you've done is you've decided how wide you want this to be, and you cut a slit up in your pattern. You just, uh, however wide the little piece is in the middle, you cut all the way up. Then you start, you cut your part that fans. Anytime you want to add fullness or ruching, you spread the pattern. And this one is on both sides. So I could have put one, two, three, four. And I could put one, two, three, four on one side and ABC on the other to help you in case they came apart. But however much ruching you want, you need to add that space. And this is about all, uh, three quarters of an inch in between each one of these. But on a full size, it would probably be more. But the softer the fabric, the more you could ruche and your wings might get bigger. But you go ahead and you take your pattern. Where did my pattern go that I had cut up? I'll cut this off so it's flat. And you adjust. Cut your first piece and then And you have to go all the way out to the edge. That's why it's a good idea to number, because otherwise it won't fan. Just like rotating darts and things, if you don't go all the way to the edge, and then you just, fan, I didn't cut that one enough. You fan it out however much you need it to go evenly. 
and you put it on pattern tissue because that'll hold it down and allow you to have your pattern to cut from. Now you will have to add a little seam allowance, but because you're not going all the way up here, the seam allowance can stop right here. And so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out your piece and gather where you're gonna, where you spread your fabric and then it will fit into that slot and then you have a normal sleeve and you're ready to go. But that sleeve is a really, it's called the sheared sleeve. It's the last one. Oh, it's one. all this here. Yeah. 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 Now, um, this is another one of my favorite books. It's been around and I think uh, they have it on Amazon and places you can get it at half price books. The pictures are a little dated, but this is such a fun book. It has so many cool ideas and they have a whole section on sleeves and they talk about like this sleeve here. I just always have thought that was the coolest oh, sleeve. It's yes. kind of a bell sleeve, but it has buttons on it. Mm -hmm. It tells you exactly how to spread and make that sleeve. Then there's other ones on, you know, talks about spreading for fullness. Uh, lots, of, like this is three variations on that same sleeve with the buttons in it. This book is just too much fun. I've, I've, had, I've had it forever. Like think about the strap sleeve with the red. Here is a beautiful piece of lace inserted in a sleeve. I think that would be really elegant in a suit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, then they also have it with loops and uh, buttons. You could do crisscross with green ribbon too. Oh yeah. I mean, there's, and it tells you how to make flange sleeves. I mean, just everything from a, and like this one, button them off. This book is just a good basic how to do details. Now you see, this top sleeve in your handout that's one page, just cut the sleeve off wherever you want that. But anyway, this one is um, a flounce on the bottom of the hem. And you decide where you would like it. If you want it up here, down at the cuff. See, this is that, that sleeve. And it's kind of long right below the elbow. So whenever you decide where you want that flounce to be, you cut off your sleeve there and you decide how wide you want that flounce. So you have to create a circle that has a diameter to the seams. Well, I guess it's easier if you just do the whole thing. You have to decide how long this is because that's the diameter of your circle. Remember you have a seam allowance. So then you draw a circle and the center has to be the diameter of this and the width outside that circle. Now this could be a cool thing because when you put it, if you put the longer side to the back, it would have a scallop to the front. Anyway, this, this center has to be the length of the sleeve. The diameter of this circle has to fit this sleeve, and then this part of the donut has to be the width you want your um, flounce to be. And you do a narrow hem, so you'd have to allow for that. But that's all it is, is that circle stuck on the bottom of the sleeve. Okay. The other one, which I thought was real cool, is they turned the second sleeve into a short sleeve and they put a little band on the bottom. And so all that amounted to was figuring out how long, because you have to have enough, you have to know how much um, blouse or um, extra you want. You don't want it tight. It has to have a little poop to it. So. All they did on that one was they cut it off and then you have to do your splitting all the way up. A 
that's why you have you trace off so you can play with your pattern and you don't ruin your real pattern that's why these are so much fun so then you would spread it to create however wide you want it to be I mean it could be huge it could be smaller and then you need to make a band based on your wrist measurement and how you would do a knot but that's all it is is spreading and then putting it on a piece of paper so that you have a pattern because it's kind of hard to cut something when it's all fanned out and then the last one is one has um, a bell attached to a short sleeve but it's split so in two parts so you just oh and if you're gonna cut them apart and then put that back together you might put notches or something although it's pretty sure that that's gonna be the top well, you know, sometimes you need a little you help getting yeah, it back together. Yeah, a lot of times I need help. <laughs> but anyway, um, you just do this. But you see how putting a number on them would help in case they came apart? Depending on how big you want that bell to be, you spread it. You would put it on your pattern paper. Then, because you have an opening where you would have had a seam, you need to add a seam allowance. So, because you still have your seam that has to go in here. So you have that seam allowance, but wherever you've decided you want to split this thing up, you're gonna have to add on your pattern paper a seam allowance cut this out because see here's your seam allowance that was on your sleeve originally so you need it for where you're going to leave open right so when you cut the <laughs> but you see you would then have the seam allowance mm -hmm. so you would do your little hem mm -hmm. and then you would attach it back to your sleeve and insert your sleeve, well, put it, back on the sleeve, yeah. put it back on the sleeve, sew the outside seam allowance and insert the sleeve into your garment. Okay, now let's see the sleeves that people brought because then maybe we could figure out how to do them.